Welcome to another video, ladies and gentlemen. In this one, I want to talk a little bit about, because um, we're in the midst of season four and the hype for season four and, you know, trailers being, you know, revealed and coming out. And no doubt we're going to get a full official trailer, um, probably, I'd say a month from now. I'd say probably just before the start of December, probably around November time. Um, sort of maybe towards the back end of November, I'm thinking. Um, but, you know, I, I have this wave of nostalgia uh, going over me at the minute. Because I think back to this time last year, you know, we were amidst the uh, season three hype, you know, it's where does the time go? Um, but I want to talk a little bit about season three in particular, and especially in the run up to season three. Um, you know, we got our first glimpse of how it was going to be handled um, now that it was over on Netflix with the, the TV spots and everything. Um, I'm kind of hoping that they don't do that this time around. I mean, they're probably going to do it, but I'm hoping not because... You know, they gave away so many things like Dimitri and Yasmin hooking up, you know, Johnny and Carmen hooking up, you know, a bit more of like Robbie's fight in Juvie, like the wall run. Like, I'm really hoping that they don't give as much away. But um, what I wanted to cover in this video was to talk about why season three needed to shake things up um you know i think back to the mark and the reason i said think back to that time is because when the official trailer was released you know the tagline in that trailer you know not just the feel and the aesthetic of new year you know like you know kick kick it like a badass or whatever it was you know uh, something along those lines um but essentially you know forget old acquaintances um and that is so true you know season three not only did it bring Ali back into the fold and, you know, mend the, you know, bridge the gap between Johnny and Daniel. And who would have ever thought that um, you had Robbie switching to Cobra Kai and kind of wish they never revealed that in any of those leaked images that we saw from set. Um, you know, because I mean, around that time, people were unsure. Maybe they were sharing students between the dojos or some unwritten rule or something. Um, then you had McGee Johnny and Daniel coming together. You had Chosen in the mix, you know. It, it shook things up a little bit and the reason it needed to more than any other season is because not only did the events of seasons one and two reach the climax with the school fight um you know leading to the fallout of the characters going in 50 different directions but it was important to shake things up to prevent the show from becoming stale now as much as i love cobra kai with any kind of story you have to have a point you have to have a turning point and what I love about season three is it doesn't just open up with, okay, Johnny and Daniel are together. It doesn't just open up with, okay, Robbie's in Cobra Kai. It doesn't just open up with, okay, Hawk switching, saving his buddy, and he's working with Miyagi-Do. It doesn't just do it, you know, like that. It earns it across the season. It's more of a, um, a like a theme, you know, a sort of, it, it's very, very um symbolic of what the season is as a whole and we get to go on that journey um i think in the grand scheme of things as much as people may like season three right now i feel like it's gonna have nothing on season four i think season four is only going to be even more elevation um and then you know cobra kai will win the tournament and then you get to season five season five will be very reminiscent of season three for me a lot of setup a lot of build up um maybe changing of the characters and then season six is the final showdown like that's the end game that's how i would have it set up season four bad guys win season five setup um redemption season six end game that's that's what i can see happening that is exactly what i can see happening but with the way season three shook it up a little bit you know i feel like characters are where they were always meant to be um, with Robbie in particular, Robbie was kind of, if he hadn't have seen Miguel with Johnny, I think Robbie would have joined Cobra Kai probably there and then, you know, I think after he realized that his father was reaching out, I feel like it would have been, you know, a, a cat, maybe, you know, who knows, maybe Miguel, Robbie would have never met Sam, like until much later, and Miguel and Robbie and Hawk, like, and Aisha, like those four, you know, and then maybe even Dimitri, those five could have, you know, all been in the same dojo. You know, you never know how it goes. Like, you know, one change requires another. Um, because at the time, Miguel and Robbie knew little of each other other than just first impressions of Robbie seeing him with his father or Miguel seeing Robbie with Sam. Um, there's that perspective uh, thing that I was talking about. Um, but I feel like all the characters are kind of in their respective places. I feel like Kreese is, Kreese is exactly where he belongs. Leading Cobra Kai. 
front runner and i've been a big advocate and a big discussion of, of a discusser of this is that don't be surprised if crease has some kind of a redemption in the future but you know one thing that season three did with the shake-up is it put crease front and center as the villain so if he is to stay the villain i'm not against that either because he's a really good villain um and now you're bringing silver into the fold like it's just it's gonna get even better um then you have kyla when I saw Kyla in the promotional, um, the trailer, I was like, yes, yes. How is this guy not in one of the dojos? He was, you know, already trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, I mean, obviously, he isn't going to last against Johnny, let's be real. But he was trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Johnny. He's the thing that, he, he started the whole thing off with Miguel in the first place. You know, give it 20 years, Kyla's going to be sat there telling a story going, this kid named Rhea came to town. Uh, I'm going to redeem Rhea. Uh, comment down below if you get that reference. Um, but essentially, you know, if this was the 80s, characters like Robbie, characters like Tori, characters like Kyla, they would be more Kreese's Cobra Kai. Characters like Miguel, Hawk, and Dimitri, or just Miguel and Hawk, no, no way, absolutely not. The current versions of Miguel and Hawk, yeah, but you have to look at it from, from context that Johnny took Miguel and Hawk in, you know, and Aisha, um, he took them in and he nurtured them. Which is why when Johnny walks up to Hawk into his face and says, I made you what you are, not Crease, because it's true. Johnny molded them into who they are now. It's Johnny's, you know, it's Johnny's responsibility there. You know, it's 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 part of Johnny's arc. Crease would have took one look at, you know, scrawny, simpy Miguel and, you know, pathetic, whiny Eli and said, you're having a laugh. Get out of here. Move. Right. Robbie, you could argue, was, you know, has his issues. But Robbie had the temper. He had the anger. And remember the way we were introduced to Robbie of him stealing that laptop in Tech Town with Trey and Cruz. And he's like, thanks, Eddie. We'll get you a cut. Wink. You know, and he's a skater and all that. He fits perfectly. Crease can mold him to his, ap you know, and this is what I'm excited about with season four. Crease will mold him to an absolute weapon. Um, Tori, you know, Crease can relate to her on a lot. But Tori is a fighter. She's been one her whole life. She fits Cobra Kai perfectly. Kyla's a dick. Um, you know, he's just an arsehole, so he fits co he fits Cobra Kai perfectly, and he can fight. Um, I know against, like, the main guys, he's not going to put in much dirt, but that's, that's, that's because Kyler is the kind of guy where, against the main boys, he isn't going to do anything. But against the, the backup characters, Kyler will do something. And the good thing about Kyler is he's a wrestler, so he'll be integrating his wrestling with his karate. Like, I'll be interested to see how that works. That's, that's sick to me. He's different. He's unique. So yeah, you know, Kyla, Tori, Robbie, they're all right. They're all where they, you know, perfectly belong. Um, you know, you could argue Miguel and Hawk. I mean, this is one of the things that I hope happens in season four. I hope Miguel and Hawk say to the Cobra Kais that are Robbie, Tori and Kyla. I hope they say this. We made, we remade, we built this dojo. We built this from the ground up. Like, I mean, Chris technically did, but you know what I mean? Like we rebuilt this. You just walked in it. We rebuilt this dojo, not you three, especially you, Kyla. This place helped me kick your ass. Robbie, this place helped us kick your ass. And Tori, the only reason that you're still here is because of Crease. So, you know, I really want like Miguel and Hawk to, to <coughs> stick it to him, you know. Um, but Robbie's where he naturally belongs, Cobra Kai. Um, as much as I love him in Miyagi-Do, and I really would love to see him and Daniel just... Even if he doesn't go back to Miyagi, though, just bury the hatchet. You know, come on, this is Sensei, and this is his student. And for Johnny, father and son, you know. But he's in his rightful place, you know. Three generations of Cobra Kai. When Chris said that, I said, Ow! Woohoo! Chills. Um, Johnny... <laughs> Johnny, however, I wouldn't say he's more in his rightful place, because it's Cobra Kai, that's his rightful place. But I'd say Eagle Fang is a, a new acquaintance, if you will. Um, but yeah, season three really shook things up for me. Um, and I think it was such an integral moment to do it. And that's what I love about this show is it has balls. It has guts. You know, most other shows, you know, they would listen to fans. You know, you know, the weirdo fans that I'm talking about who would go, Oh no, you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> Sorry, it's not about you. Um, <laughs> you can already hear it now. He's a fucking... Um, the dislike button um but you know 
if they make decisions based on the fans, they're not going to take any. They're not going to take any risks. Um, obviously, don't go too far out of left field, otherwise you end up with something like the Last Jedi. But you know, as long as you earn it, and if let's just say again, for argument's sake, let's say season three rolled up within three episodes, Robbie's in Cobra Kai. Within four episodes, Eagle Fang's made. Within two episodes, Hawks taken front and center. Within one episode, Tori's back in the dojo. Within one episode, Miguel's back to his feet. Like, if if that's what could have happened, if they didn't earn it, that's what would have happened if this was the last Jedi. But fortunately, it's not, and it earns it. So Miguel, you know, coming out of his coma and you know getting back to full speed, um, not a hundred percent, but he's better. Um, it's earned. Hawk, you know, taking front and center is earned. Sam fighting her PTSD and strengthening Karate Kid 3, therefore making Daniel look better, because let's be honest, he was nerfed in that movie. I don't care what the nerd reason is, I'm giving you the external reason. Daniel was nerfed in that film. Um, you know, uh, what was I saying? Um, Robbie joining Cobra Kai is earned. Kyla joining Cobra Kai with his goons is earned. Chris taking center stage as the villain is earned. Um, I mean, that was going to be the, the one that was earned regardless of what direction they took because they already built it up in season two. But you know what I mean? Like, they really earned it. We got to... And this is what's great. I know people were theorizing back before season three came out, oh, is Silver going to show up? I'm so glad they didn't they didn't do it in season three because it gave us a whole season of Crease leading the line. Crease running the show. And now we've got that Crease with Silver. I want them two to complement one another. Now, I do feel like... Again, if you think back to Karate Kid 3, Crease and Silver, they were at odds, you know? I mean, they weren't at odds. Sorry, let me rephrase that. They were never at odds, Jacob! Hang on, let me rephrase it. Crease was in Tahiti, taking a back seat. Silver took control. This is why I feel like down the line, not in Season 4, down the line, it could be a spot of contention for both of them. Because which one of them's the understudy? Which one of them's the psychic? It's like Batman and Robin. Eventually, Robin wants to take the mantle. Not necessarily Batman's mantle, but he wants a leadership position, which is why Dick Grayson says, okay, I'm going to go and become Nightwing now. And then that means Batman goes and gets a new Robin, Jason Todd or Damian Wayne or Tim Drake. Um, because, you know, eventually the sidekick will get to a, an evolution and a progression where they'll want center stage. Um, that's just inevitable. That's just the way it always is. That's, that's, that's growth. Um, but with Silver and Crease... I could really see it being a problem down the line. But as far as season four goes, these two are going to be buddy-buddy. Like, th th this is where Daniel and Johnny will fail. Is Daniel and Johnny, and I know everyone's going to be like, oh, Daniel and Johnny arguing. Oh, it's funny. I mean, it is funny. And I really, it's one of my, I, I, I mean, come on, we're all going to be laughing our asses off in season four. But I think this could be their downfall. I genuinely think the fact that these two bicker so much is going to be the reason they lose. Because Crease and Silver, you know, let me just throw it back to Karate Kid 3. You listening? Party time. They're in sync. Like, down the line, there could be contention. But as of this moment, as of right now, Crease and Silver, fully on board with each other. And Silver ain't coming back to lose. And Crease ain't gonna lose. The show has shown that it has balls. Crease and Silver need to win on screen. For the first time, with Johnny's son, with Tori and with Kyla. Make it happen. Bad guys win. Revenge of the Sith, Empire Strikes Back, or Cobra Kai. You know what it is. But that that's just my point, is that we can now get to these kind of stories because season three earned it. It earned it by shaking things up a bit. And it didn't just shake the whole story up by putting characters all over the place. It didn't bring Chosen back just because. Uh, just because. There was a reason. You know, Daniel went to... Um, uh to sort out his car dealership problem and he thought you know what while i'm around let me go visit okinawa i haven't been there in a while and he comes across kumiko like coincidence i think not comment if you get that reference but you know he um he goes to to see kumiko like not just by pure luck and kumiko helps him reconnect with mr miyagi something that has been sorely lacking in daniel's life and one of the best things about daniel's arc across the show especially the scenes in season one where he visits Miyagi's tomb, you know, Miyagi memories, um, the score as well. Um, and then in season two, one of my favorite scenes in the entire show is when Daniel's just wandering along the beach and he sees a fisherman that resembles Miyagi. 
and the music plays and the scores building he's like you look like you know an old friend of mine and the fisherman says if you got something worth biting eventually the fish will find you he's like you're a lot more like my friend than i thought like that can we bring the fisherman back because that scene was dope i love that just bring him back but that's Daniel's thing, is he's been missing Miyagi. So Kumiko helped him reconnect with the Miyagi through memories, through the bonds, the great time. And to know that Sam has interacted with Mr. Miyagi, that's sick. Then Chosen's brought into the fold, and he's brought into the fold instantly by going, Daniel, son! You know, it's, it's perfect. I love it. I love everything about it. It earns it, and it shakes it up well. And Chosen redefines Miyagi-Do with the equivalent of Miyagi-Do's strike first. Okay, Miyagi-Do doesn't strike first, but if an enemy assists, insists on war, you take away their ability to wage it. I'm sorry, Cobra Kai worshippers, but I think that, like, striking first is cool, and it served Kreese in Vietnam, but if you're talking about invaders and striking first before they can even strike, I mean, like, like that, that's, that's too good. Um... As much as I love Strike First. Also, shout out to Strike First. Um, but yeah, Season 3 needed to shake things up. But it earns it. You know, that's what I like about it. Is it doesn't just put characters in random positions. It really earns it. So when Robbie joins Cobra Kai, it earns it. But then when Robbie fights his father, it's earned. Because the show's been building to this point. Of Robbie just unleashing all of his anger and resentment to Johnny. For the abandonment and neglect for 16, 17 years, this kid has been left in the dust. No wonder why he was unloading on his father. And then Johnny's finally seeing this and going, oh my God, what the hell have I done? You know, and Johnny's, I think back to that scene with Miguel in the burger restaurant, one of my favorite scenes in the show between strengthening the bond between Johnny and Miguel. Um, you know, how he failed, he's failed Robbie every day since. So yes, Robbie and Johnny will reconcile. That could, that brings me to Miguel. If Miguel's like, oh, hey, Sensei, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in a, I've just got out of a coma, but we're friends. No, Miguel flips out at him. I did exactly what you told me. Look where it got me. That was earned. I buy it. I believe it. It's palpable. It's, 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 it's believable. And then, you know, when he tells Miguel to get out of the bed, you're like, oh, old times, old times right there. But yeah, this video went on a lot longer than I intended to. Um, I just get passionate when I talk about these things. Um, you know, I think uh, I, around this time I should have a Halloween Kills video coming out. Um, so Halloween Kills fans, stay tuned for that. I've got a crosshair video I'm working on for you Bad Batch fans, because I'll tell you what, that show is dope. Uh, well, crosshair is dope. Um, but yeah, guys and girls, jump in the comment section down below. Let me know if you agree with any of the points I've raised. And, you know, season three needed to shake things up. But what I love about it is it earns it. It doesn't just do it for the sake of doing it. It, do it, it earns it. It really earns it. So, guys and girls, I'll see you on another video soon. And as it's a season three video, you know, I'm just going to bring it back to Johnny. If you want something, you're going to have to crawl across the floor. Use, the da use your damn teeth if you have to. I almost butchered that there.